friends welcome to my learn easy maths channel as in this previous two days we have been discussing about the topic of arithmetic progression and we have tried to discuss many more things related to the arithmetic progression yesterday and day before yesterday today i am going to just solve very few problems which are having some technicality and skill in solving the arithmetic progression now coming to this problem without any further delay here is a question how many three digit numbers how many three digit numbers are divisible by 7 three digit number means what we are having 1 to 9 the first is the single digit and 10 to 99 the double digit and 100 to 999 is three digits so the first least three digits is 100 okay 100 100 is divisible by 7 no 101 is divisible by 7 no way 102 is divisible by 7 is also not possible and 103 is divisible by 7 no 104 is divisible by 7 no way 105 is divisible by 7 yes why because the unique place of this number is 5 see that 105 when we take 7 7 ones are we divide 7 one times And it subtracts from the ten. We get three, and three and five is the multiple. Seven five is a thirty-five. Therefore, our first three-digit number, which are divisible by seven, is hundred and five. We say that it is a a, the first term. Now, the last, that is the biggest three-digit number, is nine ninety-nine. Okay, nine ninety-nine and nine ninety-eight, nine ninety-seven. And nine ninety six, and nine ninety five, and nine ninety four. Okay, let's we test it. Nine ninety four. What happens? Nine nine four. This is seven one zero seven two seven four zero twenty eight one. Carry out this fourteen seven two zero fourteen. Yes. This is divisible by seven. Now, actually, it is divisible by seven means what? The difference between each consecutive terms will be the seven. So, nine ninety four. If you add seven now, now the next number will be thousand one. So, therefore, nine ninety four is the last three digit number which is divisible by seven. Now, I take it as nine nine four. It is a Multiple of seven are divisible by seven. The next number is hundred and twelve. The next number is hundred and nineteen, and so on. So therefore, a is hundred and five. A n is what nine ninety four, isn't it? So make a list. What is given and what is not given. A is given one zero five, and a n is given nine nine four. V n we have to find. And D will be the seven. As D is the seven, the common difference. What should we do first? We have to write the A N formula. Okay. What is A N? A N is equal to A plus N minus one into D. Don't forget. It it is very important. A N is equal to A plus N minus one into D. What is A N? We have nine nine four is equal to because the last term we assume it is last term. Divisible by seven, three-digit number, and the first term is the first three-digit number divisible by seven is one zero five hundred and five. N we don't know, which is to be determined, and D we know that it is seven. All right, this is simple uh, manipulated uh, uh, simplification. Nine ninety four is equal to hundred and five plus. Multiply inside and outside the bracket. Seven into n is seven n. Seven one the seven. Nine ninety four is equal to the right side is hundred and seven hundred and five minus seven is how much? It is ninety eight plus seven n. All right. Nine ninety four minus ninety eight is equal to seven n. Okay. 
This is unit place of 4. Borrow 1, 14 minus 8 is 6. This is 8. 18 minus 9 is uh, what? 9. And what about this? This is uh, 896. Once again, 14 minus 8 is uh, 6. And it is 8. Borrow 1, 18 minus 9 is uh, 9. And this is 896 is equal to 7n. Now, 7n is equal to 896. 896 therefore n is equal to 896 divided by 7 now n is equal to this is 7 ones are out of 8 7 goes it will be 19 then it is 7 twos are 14 out of 19 14 goes it will be a 5 comes join 7 eights are 56 therefore n is equal to 128 there are 128 three digit number between 100 to 999 which are divisible by 7 i hope this will be the best way that we can solve it and we can find out similarly there are many numbers are there either is a multiple or is a divisible we have to find in the same way one important uh, just uh, technique i would like to share with you here is which are the number divisible by 7 which are the number divisible by 7? What is the true test for divisibility of 7? As I told you in my previous test also, the divisibility rule, I discussed this, that what is the rule or what is the test for the divisibility of the 7? Because in our syllabus books, we have so many divisibility tests like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and directly we have 8, 9 and 10 and 11. We don't have any further divisibility test. But I would like to share with you this divisibility by 7. See that one. 994 and we should test it that 994 is divisible by 7 or not. The rule says that take out its unit place. Yes, we have taken it. Multiply or double it. Then it is 8. And subtract on doubling or multiplying the unit with the rest of the number. 99 is the rest of the number when we take on the 4 out. And subtract this unit. And 9 minus 8 is 1. And 9 is the number. 91. 91 is divisible by 7 or not? Yes, definitely. It is 13 7 is divisible by 7. Yes. Next, I would take that 990 say 6, say for an example. I don't want to take consecutive number because obviously you know that 994 is divisible by 7. Its consecutive cannot be divisible by 7. So I have taken 996. And as per the rule, I told you just to take the last unit number and double it, it will be 12. And subtract this 12 from the rest of the number, that is 99 is the rest of the number and minus 12. 9 minus 2 is 7 and 9 minus 1 is 8. Then you divide with 7, 7 on the 7, it is 7 to the 14, it's not divisible as the remainder will be 3. So therefore, the test, now next number is, I would like to say that 994 plus 7 is 1001, am I correct? 1001. So take the last number and double it, thereafter then take 100, rest of the number, subtract this. From this, it will be 8 and it will be 9. So, divide with 7. 7 ones are 7. Okay. 7 ones are 7 and it is 28. 7 for the 28. This is the divisibility test by 7. I hope and you enjoyed this one. friends welcome back to my maths channel learn easy maths yesterday as you know that we have started a new series the topic of our series is arithmetic progression so today in that series we have the second part of the arithmetic progression yesterday in my introductory part I discussed with you what's the sequence and what's an AP that EP means arithmetic progression. Uh, I send you one logical deduction and conclusion that every AP, every AP is 
a sequence but all sequence are not an ap okay what is the general form of an ap let's remind once again and recollect a a plus d a plus 2d a plus 3d etc the last term that is an nth term is a plus n minus 1 into d all right if you see this one what do we say the first term is a common difference is d total number of terms are n and the last term is an a n okay we know this much all right let's take one example for this one 5 and 13 and 21 29 and 37 etc this is an ap whose first term is 5 and difference is 8 because 13 minus 5 is 8 21 minus 13 is 8 29 minus 21 is 8 and so on so i take this is a is equal to here what it is 5 d is equal to 8 if this is the first term and assume this is the last term we know all these middle terms in between the 5 and 37 13 21 29 but it is a general and a common notion of the concept that we start the first term as an a but for our conceptual way that is for our convenient we assume it is that it is a, a is the first term but literally a is not an exactly the first term i tell you for example 5 plus 8 is equal to 13 plus 8 is equal to 21 plus 8 is equal to 29 plus 8 is equal to 37 what is the succeeding term for the 37 add another 8 you get which is equal to 45 yes then what is the succeeding term of the 45 add another 8 you get 53 okay if we go on adding the common difference to its succeeding term we get a new term in ap is yes. what is the first term here the first term is here phi phi then phi is the first term what is the preceding term for this phi how this is the succeeding the 5 plus 8 13 is the succeeding 13 plus 8 21 is the succeeding i would like to ask to all the viewers is there any preceding term is there yes definitely how do we get how do we obtain that preceding term preceding means the number which falls behind the given number that preceding term is same how in succeeding we got the progression adding similarly in preceding we have to subtract the common difference that is this is one what no 5 minus 8 okay 5 minus 8 is equal to minus 3. Okay, minus 3. Then again you add this one minus 3, and it is just to an another minus 8. It will be a minus 11. Minus 3 and minus 8. It is an minus 11. So this is a minus 3. is the preceding term to the 5 and minus 11 is the preceding term to the minus 3 and minus 19 is an another term now let me write a complete series uh, sorry sequence of the ap i repeat once again let me write the complete sequence of an ap so i stop here listen carefully minus 19 minus 11 Minus three, and this is again the original five, and this is thirteen, and this is twenty-one, and this is twenty-nine, and this is thirty-seven, and so on. My question to you all: What is this? These are the AP. This is an AP. Now my question is: Does this sequence are in AP? Is it is is it this in AP or not? just test it as you know this is the first term this is the second term the difference between these two minus 11 minus of minus 19 minus 11 plus 19 is equal to plus 8 our difference is plus 
you understand similarly minus 3 minus of minus plus 11 minus 3 plus 11 is plus 8 similarly then 5 minus of minus 3 it is plus 3 is equal to plus 8 this is what the important concept I wanted to just enlighten your minds. I wanted to show you that the AP can be obtained by its previous and by its next successor number also. Isn't it? So, I, we have taken what is the preceding to the phi for the same sequence of AP. The preceding to the phi is a minus 3. Then it is a minus 11. Then it is a minus 19. Similarly, what is the succeeding term? Then it is plus 45. Then it is plus 53. Then it is plus 61. So this, this is the way we can develop a well concept of an AP. I hope you understand. My students particularly, I appeal you, please watch this video again and again. You will get a wonderful concept. We don't have this only the direct the first a a plus b a plus 2d. Then we have another term but then uh, preceding to the a. I will write it. Just observe it carefully. I hope you understand this concept. Now, next. It's again my sincere appeal to all of you. Uh, viewers, please do subscribe and just share this video with your friends and get benefited with these simple ideas. Now actually, A is the first term. Okay. What is its succeeding term? A plus D. Then next it is A plus 2D. Then next it is A plus 3D. Etc. Dot, 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 dot. What is the last term? A plus N minus 1 into D. Is it correct? A first term, A succeeding A plus D and so on. By adding plus D, plus D, plus D, we get this one. Alright. What is the succeeding, what is the preceding term to this first term? The preceding term to the first term is subtract D, A minus D. Do you understand? Then A minus 2D. Then a minus 3d, etc, etc, a minus n minus 1 into d. This is the wonderful, this we can say that a basic concept of this AP. Understand? These are all the terms which leads to the succeeding. These are all the terms which leads to the preceding. And a is the middle one. Is it understand? Usually you have some technical problems often we, you get in the annual examination. Say for an example, the sum of three terms of an AP is so and so. The sum of three terms of an AP. Suppose if you want to take sum of three terms of an AP, usually you have a concept A, A plus D and A plus 2D. If you consider the sum of three terms of an AP, what do you get? You get A plus A plus A, 3A and D plus 2D is 3D. And you get two variables which is not possible for you to solve that given sum. Rather, if you take the sum of three terms of an AP, you have to take this sum of three terms. What is that? A, A plus D, A minus D. I start like this. A minus D, comma A, comma A plus D. Then you add this, that is equal to minus D plus D, which is equal to 3A. The sum of three terms of an AP is 3A. And the sum of 5 terms of an AP, what it is? A minus 2D plus A minus D plus A plus A plus 2D and A plus D, sorry, A plus D plus A plus 2D. Okay. This is the sum of 5 terms. Minus 2D plus 2D minus D plus D get cancelled. And what do we get? A plus A plus A, it is equal to 5A. This is the concept you understand that we can write the arithmetic progression in this way also. A, A minus D preceding A plus D corresponding. A plus 2D and it's succeeding, it's corresponding preceding is A minus 2D. I hope you are all following. It's a wonderful way. And A plus 3D is next succeeding. Then its corresponding preceding is A minus 3D. 
Similarly, its last term is a plus n minus one into d, and its last term in succeeding way a minus n minus sorry preceding way a minus n minus one into d. A plus n minus one into d is the succeeding form of the sequence a p from right side. And it is the a minus n minus one into d. It is the preceding form of its a p in in the left side. So if you take and if you reverse any uh, progression, you will follow this procedure. Okay. I hope you understand this concept. Now, I will take a few problems to solve. Okay. I hope you understand this one. Then we come to the solution of some of the Uh, problems. All right. What are the problems? I will take an example of this one so that you can understand easily. The third and the ninth term of an AP. The third and ninth term of an AP. It's given that what it is four and minus eight respectively. The third term of an AP is four, and the eighth term of an AP is Minus eight, respectively, and you are asked to find which term of this AP is zero. Which term of AP? Which term of this AP is a zero? All right. First, you take this one. A three is equal to four. A nine is equal to minus eight. All right. How do you write A n? Generally, we write A n is equal to A plus n minus one into d. Follow the same thing. A three can be written as A three is equal to A plus n minus three minus one. That is two d. All right. A nine. Similarly, follow A nine is equal to A plus what is n nine? Nine minus one is what? Eight d. Okay. And it is given respectively. It c is equal to four and this is equal to minus eight. What you need to do, children, listen that one. You need to do is that change there. This is a simultaneous equation with the two variable. You know that one. How to solve this one? This minus plus changes to minus plus changes to minus and minus changes to plus. All right. Now this is plus a minus a cancel. I take plus two d after changing the sign. Now it becomes minus eight d. So what is that minus eight d plus two d? It will be minus six d. All right. Then what about this plus four plus eight? It is equal to twelve. What about this d? D is equal to twelve divided by minus six. Six ones are six twos are. Therefore, d is equal to what? Minus two. Okay. We got d is equal to minus two. Now. After getting the value for the d, we have to find the value of a. Choose any one of these simultaneous equation. Any one. Either you choose this one or you choose this one. Okay, let's take first equation itself. A plus two d is equal to four. A plus two d is equal to four. A plus two. Already we obtained the value of d that is equal to minus two. Is equal to four. All right. A plus into minus minus. This is plus into minus multiplying the bracket minus four is equal to four. Remember plus into minus. Then A is equal to plus four, and this left hand side four transpose it to the right side. It shift and it becomes plus four. A is equal to eight. All right. A is equal to eight. Now, but the question is being asked: Which term of an AP will be the zero? The question is asked that uh, which term of this AP is zero? Like a n is equal to zero. A n is equal to zero. What is a n? We were a plus n minus one into d is equal to what? Zero. All right. We know the value of. A and D substitute that that one. A is what eight plus n minus one into D is what minus two. 
that is equal to zero. The nth term is equal to zero. Let's see that which particular term we get that one. Eight plus this is the common basic uh, simplification. Most of my students, on the basis of the experience, I say that you can solve the technicality of the problem, but such basic things you will lapse it and you will collapse. Don't try to get that blender or mistake here. Minus C, minus this is minus 2 multiplying both n and minus 1, minus into plus and this will be minus 2n. Okay, minus of minus it will be plus 2 is equal to 0. Do you understand? What happened? It is a plus 8 plus 2. It is 10 minus 2n is equal to 0. 10 minus 2n is equal to 0. What is that? 10 is equal to what? Minus 2n will be on the right side. It is plus 2n. Or I write 2n is equal to what? Plus 10. n is equal to what? 10 divided by 2. 2 ones are. 2 fives are. So n is equal to 5. Then what I have assumed it? a n is equal to 0. I say that a phi is equal to 0. The fifth term of n, this a p will be the 0. Let's verify it, children. Just not orally we will say and we will keep quiet. We want to make a cross check and verify. a phi is equal to what? a plus 4 d. Am I correct? What we just obtained, no? Fifth term of n, it will be the zero. Let's substitute what is a? A is eight. Plus what is uh, this d is? d is minus two. All right. Eight plus into minus, minus four to the eight. Eight minus eight is zero. What we obtained if i is always is, is, is equal to zero. This is the way that we can find our solution to the problems. Okay. I take one more example for that. I hope you understand this one. Viewers and my dear students, please go on the basis of the concept. Do not learn the mathematics just as a mechanical work. I would say that you have to just go with the contrivance of the skill. Skill is the most important. If you know the concept, then it will be good for you. I take one more example for this was the solutions now uh, then what is this okay now look at this example which term of AP arithmetic progression 3 15 27 39 will be 132 more than its 54th term which term of an AP we don't know what term is 132 exceeding than the A54. Okay. That it is given like that. Which term? We don't know. Let the term be AL. Assume that. Let the term be AL. AN is equal to what? A54 plus 132 okay this is the exact interpretation of this question which term of an AP will be 132 more than its 54th term what is our AP now the AP is first term is 3 the common difference is 15 minus 3 12 and 27 minus 15 is 12 Similarly, 39 minus 27 is 12. So, our common difference D is what? 12. Okay. Well, we have to just find what it is. Right. Write this left hand side A plus N minus 1 into D. Alright. Is equal to the right hand side A54 is written as A plus 54 minus 1 is 53D plus 132. Okay. What are the known terms and the known elements just we are having? We are having the first term 3, the common difference is 12. Substitute in on either side LHS and RHS. 3 plus N minus 1 into the D is already it is known that 12. Similarly, 3 plus 
53 d is it's 12 okay plus 132 132 now this lhs part it is calculated as it is simplified 3 plus 12 into n is 12 n and 12 ones are 12 similarly 3 plus 53 into 12 12 5 is a 60 plus 12 3 is a 36 this is 636 plus 132 here we have this two constant term 3 minus 12 what is that 12 n minus 9 is equal to 3 plus 636 plus 132 12 n minus 9 make the sum of all these 3 3 plus 636 is 639 639 plus 32 is 671 plus 100 its sum is equal to 771 okay the sum of all these three terms which is equal to 771 okay 12n is equal to 771 9 is being transposed or it is shifted to the right side minus will become plus 12n is equal to 780 okay 780 therefore 12n is equal to 780, n is equal to a 780 divided by 12. How does it divide? It divides 12, 6, 72. Out of 78, 72 is divided and we get the 6 term here. It is 60, 12, 5 is 60. n is equal to what? 65. Therefore, A65 is equal to A54 plus 132. This is the meaning. A65 is equal to A54 plus A32. Let's verify and cross check it. What is A65? A65, look here. A65 is equal to A54 plus 132. A65 can be written as A plus 64D and A54 can be written as A plus 53D plus 132. Substitute A and D on either side. If you get LHS equal to RHS, then definitely this is this sentence, mathematical sentence is true. A65 is equal to A54 plus 132. What is the first term? 3 plus 64. What is the common difference? 12 is equal to 3 plus 53 into 12 plus 132. 3 plus 12 4 is 48. 4 carry. 12 6 is 72 plus 4 76 is equal to 3 plus 636 plus 132. 763 plus 3 is how much? 771. And this is equal to 771. Therefore, LHS is equal to RHS. And what the term it is given, A65 is 132 more than is A54. This is the way that how we can get ensure that what the problem we have solved, its verification is also true. With this, my viewers, my students, and everybody whosoever may be watching, I take and end up to this today's second series. Tomorrow will be continued with the same topic but with some other subtopics like the sum of the n series. Today is a progression. How a progression turns or changes to the series that will be discussed tomorrow in the four in the forthcoming videos. We will discuss some more things. After that, we will ensure that there will be some more topics will be included in this video. With this I am going to take a leave of you all viewers and students and it is my once again sincere request and appeal what you are waiting for that one. Please press, press the bell icon, subscribe and share with your friends and don't forget, don't forget ever never that the concept of A, A plus D, A minus D, A plus D and its corresponding is A minus D, A plus N minus 1 into D and its corresponding is A minus N minus 1 into D. With this, I am going to end up my video. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.